All these values, when we have, they give us that safe guarantee that we will have our circuit protected devices are going to trip when it's required to trip. They are not going to be redundant, and then they are not going to discriminate as well, which is very important. It takes us now to redundancy of circuit protected devices. Whoa! Whoa! Good day, everyone. Here, Washimakoga Enterprises. Um, today we are going to be discussing something real deep in wood for us to understand exactly how to carry certain testing and commissioning in the field. And today we are going to focus on panel board, precisely on a distribution board or a DB. So we have a series of tests that we carry out on distribution board, which um, while we are carrying out testing and commissioning, we've uh, divided them into two different parts. We have the dead test and then we have live test. Like we all know, we have the that test which is being performed when the electrical installation or the panel board is not supplied with electrical power. And then when we have electrical power supplied to our panel board, which in this case we have is a distribution board. So we will be conducting live tests. And then we have a series of tests that we should be carrying out when we are performing live tests. And if you go to QCS 2014, section 21, and you go right up to the level of carrying out different testing, you notice that we have a series of tests that should be carried out either during the dead test and during the live test. And the same test you also find in uh, BS7671 while you're performing these different tests. And today's lesson, we are going to be focusing on at for loop impedance test as well as prospective at for current as well as um, prospective for current. So, um, and this test is going to be performed on a distribution board or a DB. So the reason why we are carrying out this test is to ensure that we we'll have our circuit protected devices trip or they are going to be uh, sensitive or they are going to be accountable. So all these tests that we are carrying out is to ensure that our circuit protected devices are going to trip when it's required to trip. And then also we now start looking at the time at which it took to trip so that we now evaluate that our circuit protective devices are sensitive enough that respond to our needs, which is very important. So like we said already, we have two different tests that should be conducted on the panel board. But before we dive into carrying out the either the air for loop impedance or the prospective for current or the prospective air for current. So we 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 will first of all start performing or carrying out the voltage test on the panel board to know exactly how many volts hit on that panel board. So we know that we have the required voltage before we commence or proceeding with carrying out the different tests that we need to carry out. Like in this case, we are talking about the F4 loop impedance as well as the prospective four current or the prospective F4 current. So we have two different um, F4 loop impedance that we'll be carrying out. We have the ZE and then we have the ZS. So when we talk of the ZE, it's the external part of the circuit, which is at the DV side. And then when we talk of the ZS, it's at the field side, which is at where we have the, the socket outlet. So the test that we're conducting at the socket outlet side, we will call the ZS test. And then the test that we'll be conducting at the DB side is called a ZE. And if you look at the ZE, the values that we should be getting should be accordance with the, the supply authority maximum external impedance, which is, uh, it depends as well on the earthing arrangement. So in this case, we might be talking of the TT system, which has a maximum um, impedance of uh, 21 ohms. And then we look at TNS, which has a maximum impedance of 0 0.8 ohm. And then we look at the TNCS system, which has a maximum um, at for loop impedance of a 0 0.35 ohm, which is very important for us to understand. And then when we now jump into start looking at the ZS, the ZS values are all, it depends on the, if you look at the BS7671, we have a chart. It has a chart whereby we'll be having different ampacity values. I'll put it there. So it has different ampacity values whereby you start looking at the different ampacity values and then you go through the different type of circuit protected devices. In this case, we might be talking of type one, type two, type B, or type C or class three, and then we have type D. So since our circuit protected devices are all class C or type C circuit protected devices, and then we are focusing on an RCBO 
why we are carrying out the air for loop impedance test. Say, for example, we are looking at 16 amps, which is the opacity of the circuit protected device. If you go through, you move now to the column of class C, you notice that our maximum F4 loop impedance is 1.08 ohm. And then since our circuit protected devices uh, that we will be carrying out this test are all 32 amps, if we go through the column of uh, class C, you will notice that we have an, a maximum F4 loop impedance of 0 0.54. So all these values, when we have, they give us that safe guarantee that we will have our circuit protected devices are going to trip when it's required to trip. They are not going to be redundant, and then they are not going to discriminate as well, which is very important. It takes us now to redundancy of circuit protected devices, which is very important. So we have that safe guarantee that while we have our circuit or our panel board energized and our circuits are all running, all the different equipments are running, we'll have our circuit protected devices trip when it's required to trip or during an effort or during a fault in that circuit, which is very important. So I'll take us to a video whereby we see the different steps that we carry out while carrying out the F4 loop impedance test, the prospective F4 current and the prospective four current. So we get to see all the different procedures and what it takes while we are carrying out this test. So for this test, we're going to be using a multifunctional tester. So if you look at a multifunctional tester, you notice that we have series of range whereby we have to make sure that we select the appropriate range whereby we are carrying out our test, which is very important. So if you look at, you'll find out that we have series of range, like I said, we have the voltage, we have the insulation resistant, resistant test that we'll be conducting, as you can see on the picture, which is shown on the screen. And then we also have continuity. We have the loop, which is impedance. We have as well loop impedance, which is, we have no trip and then we have the current, which is at a high side. So, but in this case, we are going to be using the no trip section. So we are going to be selecting on the no trip and then we have as well RCD time, which is the time at which we are going to be looking at. And then we have as well here the RCD trip current. So we are going to be selecting on this different range while we are performing this test. And then we have the test performed in different parts. So we'll be looking at um, performing this test, looking at, um, so for the air for loop impedance test, like I said, we are going to be selecting on the impedance side of the multifunctional tester. So while we carry out this test, we ensure that we have the value should be less than the maximum permissible value like I showed us on the chart of BS7671. But again, if we have our projects and then perhaps we've submitted a method statement whereby we've put down on the methodology at which we will be using to carry out these different tests. And then perhaps we have the different values which have been recommended by the consultant. So we have to follow and make sure that we have a value which is less than those values which are recommended by the consultant. But in a case whereby we don't have different values which are given to us, we have to refer to BS7671. We go through the chart, as we can see, we go through the chart and ensure that we have a, max, a, a value which is less than the maximum permissible value by BS7671 when you look at the different columns in our case here, we'll be talking of uh, class C circuit protected devices. It could either be an MCBs or either an RCBO. And then we look at the ampacity as well to ensure that we have a value which is less than the maximum permissible values that will give us a self guarantee that we'll have our circuit protected devices are going to trip when it's required to trip. They are not going to be redundant and they are not going to discriminate, which is very important. So after doing that, we have to dive as well, looking at our carrying out the F4 loop impedance. So while carrying out the F4 loop impedance test, we will carry them in different parts. Like I mentioned previously, we carried them in different parts. So we have our prospective F4 current. Prospective F4 current is intended to calculate the highest current that will stream within a four loop path during the occurrence of an electric fault, electrical fault needed by rules. So um, we carry out the test by the use of a multifunctional tester, like I said already. And then also we ensure that we have a value which is um, 
satisfactory enough that we'll be able to trip our psychic protective devices at a time which we require to trip. And then we have to perform this test in, diff in two different parts or three different parts. We, we perform it at half time on the RCBOs and then we perform it as well as one time. So half time will be the half time of the rated current of that circuit protected device. And then we look at one time of the rated current of that circuit protected device, which is going to be a maximum disconnection discone discone time of 300 milliseconds. And then we also move at five times, which is for additional protection, which will have a maximum disconnection time of 40 milliseconds. So we look at from zero degree and 180 degrees. So from zero degree, we record the value and then 180 degree, we record the value as well. So we take the highest value and then we record on our test sheet. The same way we will move as well to one time, we perform the test at zero degree, we perform the test at 180 degree, and then we record the highest value as well. We move at five times, which is for additional protection. We record the value at zero degree as well as 180 degree. So we record the highest value as well. And then for reliability, the value should be less than the maximum value, which is stated on the BS7671 chart or as per um, what is mentioned on the methodology of your method statement, which is very important. So if you look at the different circuit protective devices, you'll find out that we have a maximum breaking capacity of those different circuit protective devices. So we might be talking of either 16 amps, uh, class C circuit breakers or class B circuit breakers. If you look at our different circuit breakers that we have on site, we'll see a maximum breaking capacity of 600 amps. So we perform this test, like for example, we are performing a test for earth for loop impedance test. We ensure that we carry out this test at the furthest part of the circuit. And also I'd like you guys to put in the comment section why you feel it should be performed at the furthest part or perhaps you have something contrary to that. Put down in the comment section so that we will discuss that further. So we carry out this test at the furthest part and ensure that we have a value which is satisfactory enough that we also give us that guarantee that we have our circuit protected devices are going to trip when it's required to trip. They are not going to be redundant, they are not going to discriminate, and they are going to be accountable, which is very important. So I'd like us to go through the video and look at how we carry out the different tests, starting from the voltage test on our panel board. We had a satisfactory voltage, which is as per or in accordance with the regulation of Qatar, which if you're working in different countries, you have to make sure that you look at the voltage level and ensure that the, high, the values that you're getting when you're carrying out the measurements should be in accordance with the national electricity uh, regulation, which is very important. And then after that, now you now start diving into carrying out the different tests since we are focusing on air for loop impedance on circuit protected devices as well as prospective fault current or prospective air for current. So we now start carrying out these different tests. Like I said, we are using a multifunction tester and ensure that these multifunction testers are all calibrated and are up to date. This is very important for our safety and ensuring that we'll have our circuit protected devices they are not going to be redundant. This is very important. Thank you for watching the video and till then you're watching Makoga Enterprises. If you have any comments or any critics or perhaps you have something which we might add to this video, just comment down in this comment section so that we will address them accordingly. Till then you're watching Makoga Enterprises.